Hey, it's Mickey with Motion Restoration. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to massage someone who has shoulder bursitis. Now, my client here today is my husband and he has had shoulder bursitis a few times in the past and is currently just having some shoulder pain. So this was what you would do with a known diagnosis of shoulder bursitis. Now this is meant for you just to help out either your spouse, your friend, or just somebody. This isn't meant to be the clinical diagnosis of anything. It isn't meant to be, it's just a helpful tool for somebody in the general public who needs help. So you're gonna get your person to lie face down, having that shoulder area nice and exposed. And then you're gonna grab some lotion. So either coconut oil or a good lotion that has some glidability to it. Now, typically what we would do is we would expose the entire back and we would work the entire back, all the muscles and everything that are included with this. But we're gonna go in a little bit more of a specific type of massage for today. So I'm gonna show you just a little bit into the scapula, which is that triangular bone in the back here, into the upper part here, and then into the shoulder. So grab your lotion, get it in between each of your hands. And we're just gonna start just at the bottom of that scapula here. And I'm just gonna be putting on the lotion. So you're just gonna be warming up the skin first, warming up the muscles. So you're adding a little bit of pressure. And now the pressure that you can use is gonna be throughout the outside of your hand. So you can use your pinky and then the palm of your hand just on the outside here. So you can just use the pressure of that so then you're not gonna be using your thumbs or your fingertips. Now if you feel a lot of those little bump, 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 bumps that happen in this area along, it's called the rhomboid area, those are all just trigger points. You don't need to focus too much on those and pressing around on those because we're really trying to focus on that shoulder bursitis today. So just warming up the area, and then we like to go into this area here, the upper traps. So for that, you're gonna scoop them. So just picking them up between your fingers and your thumb. So just kind of kneading the muscle like dough. Just like this. So the muscle most commonly associated with shoulder bursitis is the supraspinatus. So that guy here, again, we have that scapula, and then you can feel along there the spine of the scapula, and just up from that, there's a nice little pocket there, a little ridge. That is where the supraspinatus muscle is located. Now, it's not, so, not super big, it's actually quite small, but that's where we wanna focus a lot of our attention on. So for that, even reinforcing by hooking your elbow into your hip, and then you can push with your thumb along that spine of the scapula into that supraspinatus muscle. Nice and slow. And then a few passes on there. Perfect. And then what I also like to do is getting into more of this upper trapezius muscle. So when we get into the shoulder, we can see where that scapula comes up and then we have our clavicle bone at the front. So where all of those come together, there's a nice groove in there. So I want you to get into that groove and you're gonna strip along that muscle the nice flat broad thumb I found works best. Keep going back to that little pinpoint area, stripping up into the neck, perfect. Just like that. All right, so really spending some time on that supraspinatus muscle after giving that some love and then we're gonna go on the infraspinatus muscle, which is below that spine of the scapula. So it's gonna be in this entire broad area. So for that, I like to start from the top part of it, and I like to push down towards the peak of that triangle, like that. Now this can be quite a tender area <laughs> on a lot of people. So just following the spine of the scapula, 
stripping that muscle down. There we go. And then I like to go from the bottom of the scapula and go all the way up into the spine of the scapula. Following that along. The outside of the shoulder. There we go. There we go. And then you're going to bring patient's arm and just kind of bringing it out a little bit so that opens up more of the back of the shoulder here. So again, along that ridge on that scapula, and we're just gonna follow that down into the triceps muscle. So for this, you can use the heel of the hand again. And down nice and slow. And then into the lats. There we go. All right, so that is the general, what we're looking at at the posterior or the back side is just opening up, bringing in lots of fresh blood into this area. So then I'm gonna get you to flip onto your back right now. So I'll get you to turn. Perfect. All right. So we have now the front of the shoulder is nicely exposed. There we go. So as a massage therapist, you would continue the massage into the neck as well. And then you would go into the front part of the shoulder for the end of the massage. But again, if this is just your spouse or someone that you're helping out with at home and you're not a trained RMT, you don't need to worry about the neck right now. We just want to focus on getting the oxygen blood supply and decreasing a lot of the inflammation that is happening in the shoulder bursa. Okay. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go, we went and did a lot of this upper traps muscle, but then I want you to go from the anterior portion or the front of the neck here. So you can feel the clavicle is here, it comes together, we have our SCM muscle that runs along here, and then below that, behind that, we have our scalenes muscle. So we're actually gonna go just behind that, and you're gonna find, you can kind of feel the top part of that scapula from the front and also into that first rib as well. And you're just gonna friction along in here. Just like this. So we're going back and forth, up and down, just like that. Then we're gonna work our way out to the shoulder. Okay. Now, oftentimes when people have shoulder bursitis, you can kind of feel it in a couple of different areas. Some people get it to be pinpoint right along the bone that runs around the outside of the shoulder. Some people say, oh, it's right there. Other people say it's more the anterior portion or the front of the shoulder. So some people get different referral patterns, but you want to work this entire area along the acromion process, which is then the shoulder bone on the outside. So we're just gonna friction along the bone on the top of the shoulder, all the way to the front. And then I like to follow it all the way to where the clavicle is, or your collarbone. And then back around. So now because these areas, it's quite a small area, it's hard to friction with 
fingertips, I find it's, it's very exhausting. <laughs> I also find it's, it's very difficult to get into with heel pressure, thumb pressure, anything like that. So I've always found that my thumb's the easiest way to go. And if it's something that's very difficult for you, you can reinforce or just press in with your other thumb as well. Just to help friction in that area. Now, a uh, trick that has always worked well for myself is adding traction to the arm in order to open up the joints here. So for that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab patient's arm. You're gonna let them know, I'm just gonna put your arm between my legs and you're gonna pull away so then it separates nicely. We have a little bit of an extra gap in there. So as you lean back, pulling that arm and tractioning it, you're gonna friction in that exact same area. Just like that. Now always recommend it also, ask your patient, how are they doing? How does it feel? How does this area feel? Get some good feedback from them so you know you're in the right area. Lots of frictioning in there. Perfect. All right, last thing we do at a massage is you flush it. So we're gonna push around again, more of that blood. Help to decrease that inflammation. So doing a massage like this, typically even five to 10 minutes, just to help to increase circulation, help bring in those nutrients, and help to decrease that inflammation. So this type of massage, again, five to 10 minutes does help out and doing it multiple times in a week, you'll start to notice a difference. Now, if you don't get rid of the cause, you'll never get rid of the pain. <laughs> so if it's something that you already know, this is what's causing it. Sometimes it can be our posture, our job, the way we sit in a car even, things like that can cause a bursitis in us. So it's just inflammation of the bursal sac so if you can figure out what the cause is and eliminate it, it does help to get rid of the pain sooner. But if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, it'll never get away. <laughs> so I wish you the best of luck with massaging your friend, family member, or anybody else who is suffering from shoulder bursitis. We'll see you next time.